I'm Scott Elmore, this is Sam IT, and on today's video, we're gonna talk about why you need to interview a lot fewer people when you're trying to hire someone for your business. Let's get to it. So when you're going to hire someone new for your business, especially if it's in IT, there's a tendency to want to interview as many people as possible. You gather tons of resumes, you look through them all, you pick through what seems to make sense based on all these things, and then you call people in or do it by video chat or whatever, and you go through lots and lots of interviews, and at the end, you try to figure out who to hire. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't think that's a very good process. Now, if you're going through lots of interviews and you can't find anyone who's qualified to do the job, of course, you may need to move on and look at someone else. I'm not saying that you need to just hire someone whether they're qualified or not, and I'm not saying to just give up and not hire someone, but what I mean is once you find qualified candidates, maybe not just one, but not very many, I recommend that you stop interviewing because, and here's what's important, really quickly, humans lose the ability to remember which person is which, even if we take good notes, it's extremely hard to have a good feel for which person is better than another. And also, extremely importantly, we have almost no capability in any modern hiring and interview process to actually determine how good someone is versus someone else. You may have someone you like better, but it's probably based on personality or the way that you interact rather than how qualified they really are. We see this every day. People who have absolutely no idea what they're doing are often promoted and hired into senior roles, and people who know a lot are struggling to find work. The interview process pretty generally is broken. We're not going to address that here. That's a different problem. I mean, we may address it here on the channel, but not in this video. But we know that this is true. And so if you interview, let's say 100 people and 10 of them are qualified to do the job, the problem you will have is that you will almost certainly be unable to tell which person is which from that pool. You will automatically prioritize either the first or the last person. You will almost certainly prioritize the first and the last over the people in the middle. And you will probably have extremely little capability, even if you were talking to each person fresh, directly in front of you to differentiate which one is good and which one is bad. You may be able to tell which one is very good and which one is very bad, but as long as they're within any kind of reasonable proximity, you are probably going to struggle to tell them apart, even once they've started working for you for a little while. So instead of interviewing lots and lots of people, putting a lot of people through that process, spending lots of your internal resources, doing something that ultimately may be harmful to you, you may want to try simply hiring someone faster. Plus, and we'll talk about this in another video, hiring fast is a really important part of doing a good job in the interview process. So a rule that we often used in high performing organizations is once you know you have someone that you want, you never let them leave the office. You make sure that before they get in their car to go home from that interview, before they hang up that Zoom call, that they have an offer in their hands. Make them in the position where they understand that you're excited, you're committed, and it's up to them to turn it down. You're not gonna get every person you want, but you're gonna get better results. If you let someone who's qualified walk out the door, they know that you're hemming and hawing. They know that you're not conveying that they are certainly the right choice, they will always think that they were someone you settled for because you weren't certain at the time, which is true. If you don't hire them on the spot, you are not certain that they are the person, even if you think that they're the best candidate. And they will be looking for something else as soon as they go out the door, and they will not be prioritizing you because you did not take them that seriously. If, you're, if they are not your first candidate, they are going to prioritize another job over you. So the process of interviewing lots of people, while it may seem like it is doing a good job, like it's doing due diligence and hiring, it is anything but. It is exactly the opposite. I normally look at a maximum of three qualified candidates. Once I've spoken to three qualified candidates, there's no way I'm going to speak to another. And in most cases, if I have a candidate who clearly meets the needs, I end the process there. I don't care who is waiting in the wings unless I have someone who simply seems like a rock star and I have to give them a chance and they've already made it to the point where I'm aware that they're about to make it to the interview stage. Outside of that, I am done. I want that person hired because I'm not gonna know the difference, but my time will be wasted. I risk losing the person I've already interviewed and the person that is coming may confuse me and make me hire the wrong person. Those are all risks I don't need to take. No process is perfect. Don't look for this to be, well, that's not perfect, so I'm not gonna do that. That's illogical. The thing we wanna do is create the best chance. And 
Anything we do where we're creating too many people in the interview process, we are simply increasing our risk of making mistakes and making the process more expensive and making us more likely to lose the good candidates because the people who can identify good, the people who can hire well, are going to snatch those people from you while you're going through this due diligence process. It is not due diligence. You can't say that it is, right? That's really important. If someone's trying to use that kind of framework, say, no, due diligence is hiring the right people when we can. This is sloppy, wasteful, and hiding the fact that we're not really sure what we're doing. And so we're doing this instead because it makes managers feel like we're busy. And maybe we don't have anything to do at work. And this is relaxing to go interview people because we get to go get lunch with them or have coffee or whatever. I get it. I know why people like to do interviews. It is one of the most relaxing things. And there's no way to gauge your performance on it, at least not reasonably. And so it's nice to do interviews. Your employees are looking for ways to not do as much work. Instead, hire quickly. You will get far better results. And I had this happen to me recently. I recently had a, a career move to a senior position at a major company in the United States that looked really uh, interesting. The team sounded really good. The people involved were really good. That The people that I, I have a lot of faith in, their recommendations from the inside. And then I didn't make it to the interview stage. And I asked them what the status was. And I said, they feel that they already have someone too far along in the process to interview anyone further at this time. I don't know why they did that. My response was, that's exactly what they should be doing. I'm sad because I was interested in talking about that role. I wanted an opportunity to at least turn it down. But I'm impressed by the fact that they were doing a smart interview process. Essentially, they had someone in the hand. They have no idea if I'm interested in the position. I could go through that interview and then say, oh, I have something else, or oh, it's just not what I'm interested in. And I'm a high risk position because I'm already working. I have no need to take that position. They would have to convince me of it. But the fact that they interviewed the way that they did implies that they are more likely to be able to convince me because they're doing good things to hire good people to do the right thing for them. So while it was a negative for me, I respect the fact that they're at least in that one tiny aspect that I'm able to see, attempting to hire well. They're respecting their process. So respect your process, respect your company, look for good results, interview fewer qualified people. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you have questions you want to discuss hiring processes, absolutely ask away. My first foray into publication was with eWeek doing uh, articles on how to hire better in IT uh, almost 20 years ago. So this is something I've been passionate about for a very long time and most of my senior positions have referenced my publications about hiring over the years. Uh, I've been a hiring manager for some of the world's largest companies. So that's something I do take very seriously and I do in companies of all sizes. And this stuff applies everywhere. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I've got a link to that. It's going to be in the description. I'll put it on the screen. And as always, like, subscribe, and share with your colleagues. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Everyone, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for all of you who have been supporting this channel over the many years that we have been here. I'm working really hard to get this channel back on track and get videos coming out on a regular basis. And part of that is something we've never done before, and that is give you guys a way to support the channel. It would be amazing if you wanted to do that, whether it's something as simple as giving it a like, a subscribe, and sharing with your friends, telling your coworkers or your boss or your company about it, all of that would be fantastic. For those who want to do a little bit more, you can buy me a coffee. Down in the links below, I have a link where you can go and support me directly. Any coffees that you buy is money that comes directly to me, so that's a great way to support the channel directly. You can also buy my book. Not all of you are aware, but I recently wrote Linux Administration Best Practices, and that is available on Amazon. That link will be below as well. That would mean a lot to me if you guys went out and purchased that. That really does help quite a bit. And for those who are looking for more than this channel does as a YouTube channel, I am a consulting CIO, and those that are interested can go to ntg.co. And that is where I've been for the last 23 years as a researcher, as an engineer, as a consulting uh, information technology and operations director for companies of all types and sizes all around the world. If Whether you need just a little bit of consulting, you need some advice on a project, or you're looking for someone to actually oversee all the operations of your company from a business infrastructure perspective, we offer all of that. Please reach out, sales at ntg.co. We would love to speak to you about what we can offer. Thanks so much for watching the show. I will see all of you next time.